So we now have our server built. We already know this, we've taken a look around the control panel, but how do we access the server? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and copy this IP address and go ahead and paste it uh, just up here. So let's go ahead and paste this in and we'll see what we can see. So we get here the Apache 2 Ubuntu default page. So this is basically the web server entry into our server. Obviously at the moment we're accessing it on port 80, which is the default server port. This is all you're going to get when you hit your domain name or your IP address. And we'll look at attaching a domain name a bit later. So it gives you some instructions here. So you can go ahead and read these if you want. But what we're going to be doing now is connecting to our server via SSH. Now, how, however you generated your key, whether you, you are on a Mac or you're on Windows, uh, like we saw before, you will have a public key and you'll have a private key. So if you are using PuTTY, you would have generated a public and a private key. And you, as long as you have these ready to go, you can connect via PuTTY. So if you are using Windows, fire PuTTY up now and you can go ahead and connect with your IP address and using your private key. But again, I'm on uh, a Mac, so I'm going to be using my terminal to do this. So I'm currently within my SSH directory. You don't need to be within here, but it's just a little bit easier to specify our private key if we need to. So to SSH into our server, I'm going to use the SSH command. I'm going to choose the key I want to use. In this case, it's just called project. And when we connect to our server, the user that we use is root. And then we say at, and then we give the IP address. So here I'm going to go ahead and grab this IP address. I'm going to paste it in here. I'm going to hit enter. And that's gone ahead and connected us to our server. So we're now within our server. So there's a couple of things here that we can note. We get the uh, default Ubuntu output. So just gives us system information, etc. But DigitalOcean, uh, when we install a LAMP stack, also gives us information about this too. So the first thing to note is your web root is located at var www.html and can be seen by and then your IP address. So we already know this. We've seen this just here. What's also interesting is we have details of your PHP installation. We have this file called info.php, which at the moment just contains the PHP info function, which outputs installation details of our PHP installation. We also have our MySQL root user password just here. So we can use this to actually connect to MySQL if we need to build up our database or etc. So uh, we can go ahead and run MySQL secure installation uh, to basically make our server ready for production in terms of MySQL. So let's go ahead and just copy this command first of all and paste this in. Now enter current password for root. We already know this. So let's go ahead and copy this and just paste this in here. Do we want to change the root password? You can go ahead and change the root password to a stronger password if you want, but I'm going to hit no. Do we want to remove anonymous users? Yes, we do. That's really important. Do we want to disallow root login remotely? So do we want to disallow this, disallow other people or ourselves when we're not inside of our server to log in? Well, this is a little bit of a tricky one because basically if we want to use uh, some software uh, outside of our installation to connect, we're not going to be able to if we disallow root login. What you can do is use something like PHP MyAdmin from inside of your server to connect. But for now, I'm going to say, no, I don't want to because we might use some external software. You can always go ahead and disable this later. Do we want to remove the test database and access to it? Yep. Uh, should we reload privileges table now? Yes. And there we go. So we're all done. So let's just clear this again. And what we're going to do now is just take a look around managing our server from inside of here. So we're just within a Linux installation. So we can use Linux commands. If you're not used to these, you can go ahead and look them up. So ls is going to list a directory. cd is the same as on Windows. So we can go back a directory. So we're now within our sort of root directory of our server. Now remember our web files are located within var, so we can cd into var, we can list the directory again. We've got this dub 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 folder, so we can go ahead and cd into that. 
And then we have this HTML folder, so we can CD into that. Now don't worry, this isn't going to be the way that you do manage your files. We're gonna look at using SFTP to connect to our server, so you can easily upload all of your project files using your favorite FTP client. So we'll look at that uh, in a later video. But here we can see index.html and info.php. So index.html is this file that we're currently on. And we also have that info.php file, which basically gives us uh, installation details and configuration details of our PHP installations. So that's really useful. But you do not want to keep this file in your web directory. There's no way that you want anyone to be able to access this. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and remove that. You can always add it in later. We can also just take a look at this. So we can say cat info.php. All it contains is a starting PHP tag, the PHP info function, and the closing PHP tag as well. But let's just remove this so no one can get access to it. So it's removed now. And when we refresh, we see a not found error. So returning to this page here, that's basically our index.html file that we saw in here. And we can modify this later when we uh, do FTP. So a couple of things that we might want to do. What happens if we want to restart our web server? Say we write a script that like completely crashes everything and we, we just want to restart Apache. Well, what we can do is say service Apache 2 restart. So that'll go ahead and restart it. And there we go, done. So we can also do a host of other things. Say we wanted to go ahead and update our PHP settings. Now, if we go back to our root directory, you see we have this Etsy folder here. So let's go into this and let's list this directory. So we've got a lot in here. But if we go ahead and CD to PHP 5 and just list this, we've got Apache 2. So we can go ahead and find our PHP INI file. Now we can do this using FTP later, so don't worry too much. But for example, if we did want to update this in the terminal, we can use vim to do this. So we can say vim php.ini, and that's going to give us our PHP configuration. So you can go through this, you can update anything you need to do. Uh, we can hit I on the keyboard to insert. So we can go ahead and uh, just type anything in here, whatever we want to do. And then to save it, I'm going to hit the escape key. I'm going to hit uh, shift and colon and then WQ. Now, if this is confusing you, don't worry. We can do all this using FTP. And then once we're done, we can go ahead and say service Apache 2 restart. And that will go ahead and take our PHP settings back into, uh, into configuration. So that's basically done. So we're currently within our server. From here, you can install things. You can update anything you want. You basically have full control over your server, which is a massive benefit over standard hosting. Again, don't worry if this is too confusing for you. It's unlikely you're going to need to update your PHP version anytime soon. You're not going to need to manage your server too much. But if you do, you know you can find help online and you can go ahead and uh, SSH straight into your server and go ahead and update whatever you want. So in the next video, we're going to jump straight into FTPing into our server to go ahead and upload project files, which is really the main reason you want to host.